Right, product review time again. Now, if anyone's been following along, um, you'll notice I've been trying to do some work on my project cards this summer. I say trying because it's not going very well because all the batteries keep going flat. Decided to do something about that. All right, bit of background first before we get fully into it. I do, of course, already own a battery charger. The problem I'm having is it's not actually charging. So this is my old one, which a keen eyed amongst you will notice it's very similar to the to the last one. It's another half of up to 1200cc battery charger. I've had this, oh, years, 15 bloody years maybe. At the time I had a 1.2 litre car, so that made perfect sense. Now uh, the smallest I have is a 1.4, and then I've got two 1.6s, a 1.6 diesel, and then a 2.3 petrol. Now the engine size doesn't necessarily mean that much to a battery charger, but the long and short is this isn't charging. I had it connected up to the Mini, which doesn't have the biggest battery in the world, for nearly 48 hours, and it still wasn't above 12 volts, it was at like 11.1, .1. and then when I disconnected it, it dropped down to about 10. And when I took it off, and I basically did a bench test, so I just plugged it in, then ran my multimeter across these two with no other load on it. It's only putting out 11.4 volts. So it's never going to charge a battery. Just It's just not going to happen. So we're going to discard that. Um, I'm not throwing it away. I don't think I'm going to be able to fix it. The internals of a battery charger, whilst there are no moving parts, I'm 99% certain they're beyond my capability to fix them. It, even if I did, it's probably not a good idea. So if you do it wrong, you'll end up with fires and dogs living with cats and yeah, nothing good will come of it. What I might do with it is turn it into a sort of low voltage transformer for you know small electrical projects in the future. Basically just, I'll have a 12 volt supply on a, on a test bed for whatever I'm doing. Could be quite handy for it. But yeah, anyway, so we got rid of that, in fact, in fact, actually, before we throw it out of the way and move on, I'll show you what I mean with it. We'll plug it in. I've got my extension lead down here. Don't let those touch. Nothing good will come of it. So that's plugged in. The little power light is on. It blinks on the camera, but it is on constant in real life. And I'll try this out. You're watching, I'll be putting out more power now. But it was definitely only in the low 11s when I was testing it. Yeah, 11.05, it's not enough. You need to be charging. An alternator will charge at around about 13 to 14 volts. A battery charger should be doing about the same. That's not enough, it's a 12 volt battery. You need to be putting more in it to bring it up. So that's gone. I don't know what's happened to it, but it's not doing its job. So we've had to buy a new one. This one, now, that's what it says, up, uh, petrol and diesel vehicles up to 2 litre. I do have a 2.3, but, yeah, whatever. Uh, should be close enough. Automatic battery chargers, it's got a few extra features with it. Yeah, you've got different types of battery it says it can handle. It has a polarity check in case you plug it in the wrong way around. The automatic bit is, once it detects that the battery is fully charged, it then goes into soft trickle charger mode. It just maintains the level rather than continuing to just pump electricity in because then you risk overcharging. So it says on here, um, yeah, suitable for up to two liter, not suitable for start stop. Uh, the reason being is these start stop ones, they generally have what's called AGM batteries and you need a special type of charger for them. One of my cars is start stop, but if I'm honest, if I end up having to charge that battery up on a regular basis, I'll just buy a new one for what it's worth because it, it's not worth cocking around with it. And 15 hours charge time based on a 60 amp hour battery. I have no idea. I didn't bother to check what the amp hours are on my batteries, but bollocks to it. And that'll be from stone dead flat. Some of them still do have some charge in them. That's what we've got in typical, you know, bright orange Halfords box. That sign art just says the same. And that bit. Oh, look on the back. There we go. Super for all 12 volt automotive lead acid batteries and deep cycle leisure batteries, including most gel types. 
not suitable for start stop batteries electric vehicles or golf carts can you imagine someone hooking this up to their tesla fucking hell fucking idiots a quick start guide with the unit unplugged um, we'll read that later it says once again not suitable for start stop or agm batteries consulting your vehicle handbook blah 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 blah, blah. Charges should be disposed of in household waste, but return to your, uh, yeah, so basically recycle it. Primary 230 volts AC, 50 hertz, 110 watts. Secondary or output 12 volt DC. In reality, you should, probably should be doing a little bit more than that. Standard setting is 8 amps um, or sealed setting 3.7. I don't really know much about batteries, but I suppose if it's sealed, it should probably be lower. F. And, ah, yeah, here we go. Maximum battery capacity, 120 amp hours. That's a big-ass battery. Minimum of 20. I mean, that's basically a set of double A's. Cable length, 1.3 metres. Okay. So that's the packaging. Um, yeah, contact us, Halfords, blah, 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 blah. So, all right. Let's pull it out of the box and see what we get in it, shall we? Right, there we go. So let's pull this out like this. I have to note, whilst it's the same sort of design, it is bigger and considerably heavier than my other charger. What's this? That's just packaging. That's all just sort of been keeping it in place. Fair enough. That's actually reasonably appropriate packaging. That's just to stop this getting damaged if the box is dropped. It's cardboard, it's recyclable, and there's not that much of it. And the box itself is just cardboard. In a bit of a bag. I suppose I think in warehousing you don't want moisture getting into something like this. Okay. We'll let them off on the packaging front. That's perfectly appropriate packaging. And all of it recyclable. There we are. Yeah, that is... I mean... I don't really know how to put weight across on the camera. I can't be bothered to go get, set, get a set of scales for it. But it's a fair bit heavier. And there's the old one, look. All them next to each other. Yes. I can tell there's definitely more gear in this. So, right, nice cow handle. Ooh. Rubberized handle. Mmm. It's alright. The other one doesn't have that. The other one still has its bit of string on it, or it did until recently. No, it's still got it for the instructions. Let me see. Instruction manual. Please read and understand these instructions prior to using the charger and keep safe for future reference. Safety instructions. Wear protective glasses and turn your face away when connecting or disconnecting the battery. I'm guessing they're thinking in case it blows up. It's basically don't cock around with car batteries. Battery acid is corrosive. If acid comes in contact with the skin or eyes, rinse immediately with plenty of water and seek medical advice at once. Yeah, because it's going to melt your face off, that's why. Do not use this charger on batteries that may be internally defective. Yeah. Unfortunately, that is precisely what I intend to do. Oh, it tells you the difference between standard and sealed. Have removable caps allowing the battery acid level to be checked. After following the battery manufacturing instructions to ensure correct acid levels, set the battery switch to standard. Have no removable plugs and therefore battery acid levels cannot be checked. Set the battery charger to sealed. Now, oh, it's already on sealed. I don't know if that's intentional or not. But I'm fairly sure all of mine are sealed, so it's going to be staying on that one. Which unfortunately means it's going to put less amperage through it, but that's still better than it blowing up. Operation. Once you have checked the correct battery connection, you can start charging by connecting the charger to the main supply. The charging LED light should glow yellow, indicating that charging has commenced. If there is no light, then it probably means that you have connected the battery clips incorrectly. If so, the polarity check LED will glow. Remove the charger from the main supply and reconnect the battery clips correctly. The yellow LED charging light will glow until the battery reaches full charge, at which point the green ready and maintaining LED light comes on, indicating that the charger is in maintenance mode. The charger will monitor the state of charge of the battery and switch between charge and maintenance modes to protect the battery. The charger is designed to be left connected to the battery for extended periods. However, the battery and charger must be regularly monitored and not left on charge while you are away on holiday or away for long periods. 
No, I bet people do that, you know. I think, oh, I don't want a flat battery. I'll leave the battery on charge while I go away for two weeks. Come back and the fucking house has burnt down or something. I bet people have done that. I mean, I once fell asleep and left a battery charger on all night and I felt like a fucking idiot for doing it. But that's basically it. Connect it up, plug it in. Don't cock around with batteries and battery chargers. Alright, I'll have a quick look at the features of it. So that's our switch for sealed. It's life on sealed with me. Uh, I've got these LEDs. Different layout, but they're the same size and probably going to be the same brightness as the old one. The other one doesn't have the check polarity one. It just had a fuse that blew if you did that wrong. Not that I ever did it wrong because I'm not a fucking idiot. And like I said, it's quite weighty, a fair bit bigger, but it's not massive. I remember battery chargers of old were, were big old things. You know, they were like this. But, yeah, this is actually still quite reasonably sized. Hmm, right, I'll look at here, so, standard mains plug, same as the other one, it sort of tucks away in there for easy storage, which is quite nice, and I won't unspool it now, but that looks like a decent length of wire to it as well, I think it said 1.3 metres, and then the other side here, again, they took away, they look to be the same clips as the other one. Yeah, they are exact same size and everything. Just a bit newer and shinier. Eh, okay. At least I know I can use the old one for spare parts if I ever have to. And they took away neatly in there. I'll stick them in that way. Right. It's a simple product, really. There's, like I say, these things don't really have moving parts. You've got a switch on it, plug, connectors. You plug it in and let it, let it do its job. What we're going to do, we are going to take it outside to one of the cars and... Well, let's know what. We'll do it on all three, because you know, there's no mad rush. Yeah, start with one of them. Check the battery voltage before we start charging. And then we'll leave it to run until that gets to green. Um, and we'll see how long it takes for each one. They're all different types of battery. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see how well it does. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and watch it, so it's not going to be the most precise thing in the world, but... You know, we'll check it every every hour or so for each one and see how um, how well it does. And then in theory, if it's doing its job right, each of those cars will start. You know, when that gets to green, the battery's ready, the car will spin over and start perfectly well if it's doing its job right. So yeah, let's get outside and let's go do that. Ooh, one other thing we can do before we go outside, let's check the voltage on this thing. See what it's putting out. I'm expecting the voltmeter to read well over 12 volts because that's what it's supposed to do. Get out. If it reads 11 like the other one, then I'm going to be pretty fucked off. <laughs> right. So what have we got here? Right. Oh look, it's blinking on the camera again. But yeah, the power light is on solid. Let's get our voltmeter out. It's possible this won't give us any reading. If, I mean, I don't know how smart this charger is. If it realises it's not connected to a battery, it may not put anything out. I'll move that so you can see it. Hmm. Yeah, so we get minus 0 0.7. Change it over to sealed. Minus 0.6. 0.62. The little yellow charging light doesn't come on either. Alright. I get the feeling there's a, an extra. The old one just used to put out power as soon as it was plugged in. I get the feeling this won't do that unless it knows it's connected to a battery. And this clearly doesn't convince it of that. Hmm. I suppose we'll find out when it goes on the car then. Alright, so since this is the short version of this review, we're just going to skip through all of the battery testing that we did on the three cars. I'll summarise it now whilst we're watching this lovely bit of time-lapse video. So we started with the Corsa. That has a battery from a BMW X5, the Mark 1. Those came with between a 3.5 and 4.5 litre engine in them. Um, so yeah, it's obviously a battery that's much bigger than this charger was designed for. That being said, 
it did do it. It did charge it. It took a hell of a long time, but it did charge the battery. And also, to be fair to the charger, I've since discovered that that battery was faulty. Um, yeah, it just it would show as charged, and it would hold charge. It would hold hold volts, um, but it just didn't deliver the the juice when I was trying to start the car. Um, if you followed my uh, Course B Will It Start series, I put a newer, good battery on it that was probably half the size of the battery that we were trying to charge, started it first time. So, fair play to the battery charger there. It managed to charge a battery which obviously didn't want to be charged, was faulty and was like twice the size that it was designed to do. So, good marks to it there because, well, I can't really fault it. We then went and charged the mini battery. It turns out that battery is also faulty, badly faulty. Um, yeah, it's what happened was we put the charger on, and the thing with the mini battery was it was supposed to be the exact rating that this charger was made for, um, and it showed fully charged in like 40 minutes, which seemed a bit too good to be true. We went to try to start the car, and the car's dead. We checked the battery voltage, it's only on 10 volts. We then reconnected the battery charger, thinking, well, that's a bit weird. Why did it show fully charged when it wasn't? And um, after like two days worth of charging, it still wasn't fully charged. We couldn't seem to get it that battery to go above sort of 9 or 10 volts. It was just, it's knackered. So that battery is actually now in the bin, it's gone. So we'd, we're having to write that one off as a duff test. Can't really say anything more about that. The Mazda one was interesting. Now that is, as a lot of Japanese cars are, very small battery. It's only like a 20 amp hour one and this thing's rated for 60. Should have had no problem charging it whatsoever. However, that something is up with the Mazda and it's causing a drain on the battery. I think it's the aftermarket stereo from the previous owner, but that's for another video. That battery was completely flat, as in 0. 2 volts or 0.3 volts I was showing across it and the problem that that then caused was the charger wouldn't start charging it seems to have some sort of safety feature on there where it won't deliver power until it knows that it's connected to something whereas my old charger just puts out electricity well you know whatever if you touch the two things together you get sparks but then that's a problem because if you have a completely flat battery this battery charger is useless I ended up having to put the old battery charger on it for about an hour or two uh, and then swap over to the new battery charger that I was trying to test, which kind of ruined the test on there because, to be fair, that old battery charger, as it turns out, is still good and it still works. Um, so it was, the after just a couple of hours, that small battery was up to like 10, 11 volts, so the charger that was on test really didn't have that much work to do. So. Yeah, that was a bit of a bad mark. If you have a completely flat battery, this thing's useless. Um, so, yeah, not sure what to make of that. Well, I do. Uh, those uh, orange and green lights are hopeless. They will give you false positives. They'll tell you the battery is charged when it isn't. And then the automatic side of it as well just ruins your charging. It's, it's hopeless. So, yeah, that's a quick summary of uh, what we're doing the time lapse. So the actual long conclusions where I explain in a bit more detail are coming up right now. Okay, right, time to summarise on this thing. I'm not sure what to make of this. I'm really not. Is it a capable charger? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Is it charged? Well, it charged two batteries. One of them was faulty, so we can't blame it for that. Yeah, will it do the job? Yes. The, the problem I have with it is... These two little lights here. Yeah, this whole thing of, oh, it'll be orange once it's charging, and then once it's green, it's it's ready to go. It didn't seem to work. I mean, we tried on three cars. We started with the Corsa. Now, it did charge that battery. It took it a lot longer than it said it would, but that battery is a lot bigger than even this larger charger was designed for. That battery, as I keep saying, came out of a, a BMW X5, they had like a th something like between a three and a half and a four and a half liter engine um you know and this is all designed for up to two liter that's obviously a much bigger battery but it did do it 
and eventually it did go over to the ready maintaining option just had to be left on for like two days it did do it we then moved on to the mini now the mini we can discount the results from that because it turns out that battery is faulty even after leaving this on it for two days it still just would not take charge we could get it up to 10 maybe 11 volts but then as soon as we disconnected it it dropped straight back down to eight and that's without it even being connected to the car so we can discount any results from the mini because it's not a fair test that battery is obviously knackered it's it's kaput the bit that annoys me is we then put it on the Mazda. Now, the Mazda, as with a lot of Japanese cars, has a really small battery. It's actually probably not any bigger than this charger. Now, it charged that up really quickly. Um, it's only, this is, you know, it says 15 hours based on a 60 amp hour battery. The one in the Mazda is only like a 20. So it charged it up in no time. And we were showing, you know, like 13 and a half volts across the battery. We disconnect it and we've still got like 12.8. It's fully charged. It's ready to go and the car starts brilliantly. But we're still stuck on the orange light. I left it on for an entire day, even though the battery is showing us charged. And we still never got into the green. And whilst we're on the Mini, even though that battery wasn't taking charge, it did flick over to green in record time as well. It did it after a couple of hours. Well, less than that even. But the battery obviously wasn't charged, so this whole bit here doesn't seem to be working properly. Granted, one was on a faulty battery, so that may have thrown it off. But then, the battery in the Mazda is good and well within its capabilities, and yet it never got into the green. Even though the battery was obviously fully charged. Yeah, I'm not sure what to make of that. Will it do the job and charge a battery? Yeah, of course it will. Can you rely on what it says on here, on all the functions of it? No, no you can't. The other thing that really annoyed me, this automatic side of things, this won't start delivering power unless it knows it's connected to something, which is fair enough, but the old charger puts out power regardless. Now, you may think, oh, well, this is the safer option. Yes, but the problem with that was the battery on the Mazda was completely flat, 0 0.3 volts, I think it was, or maybe even less. And this didn't recognise that it was connected to it. So what I ended up having to do was connect the old charger for an hour, put a little bit of charge into it, and then connect this to bring it the rest of the way. If this had been my only battery charger, I'd have been buggered, because it would not start charging. It didn't seem to matter what setting it was on or what I did or anything, it just would not start charging the battery. So, you know, it says, you know, 15 hours charged have them completely flat. It doesn't appear to be capable of charging a battery that's completely flat. It will refuse to do so. Which is a big deal, really, because you know, you're then going to need a second battery charger to allow you to use this if you have a completely flat battery. And people might say, well, you know, when are you ever going to have a completely flat battery? There's always a bit of charge left in them. Well, you know, you try leaving your headlights turned on overnight and see how much charge you've got left in your battery then. Don't take long. You know, a simple mistake and you might well be shagged and this will be no help whatsoever. So that's the downsides of it. Yeah, this bit doesn't work and it can't charge a completely flat battery. Upsides, um, it is a capable charger. And like I say, it did one battery that was way too big for it. And it did another one that was well within its capabilities and did it quickly. Ignoring this bit. Whilst it was in use as well, um, my other one used to get really quite hot whilst it was charging. This thing, you couldn't detect any heat coming off it as I was handling it. It's clearly a very capable charger and yeah, no excess heat coming out of it. So it felt like a safe product to use. I really like this handle at the top. It's got a nice rubberized bit to it. It's quite useful. It's not too big. So I, you know, I could easily position it in an engine bay if I needed to, if it didn't quite reach to the ground. Yeah, you get a good length of wire on these clips here and on there. Yeah, do I regret buying it? No, no, I don't. I needed a bigger and better battery charger. Having tested this, I think it's safe to say that there's actually nothing wrong with my other charger. I'm going to keep that now anyway. Um, it's just that what I was asking it to do was well beyond it, so it was it was failing me. But I'm going to keep it because it's still a good charger. So I now have two battery chargers when I didn't necessarily need one. Which is a bit annoying because I'm a tight ass. Anywho, that's, that's not really the product's fault, that's... 
well, I don't know whose fault. That's my fault. Fuck it, it's my fault. So, yeah, would I recommend it? Yeah, sure. If you need a, a battery charger, I'd go with one of these. Just with the advisory, though, that it won't charge a completely flat battery. And you may want to go for one that isn't automatic. Just get a cheaper model if it's capable. You know, if you've got a small-engined car, you don't need something this big. You don't need a fancy automatic charger. Improvements. Yeah, this needs work. I mean, battery chargers of old used to have a little gauge on them. You'd have a little needle that went up so you knew when it was charged. You didn't have to rely on a light. Also, it could do with a, a button or a switch so it starts delivering charge no matter what. Say if you've got a completely flat battery, you need to be able to override this automatic bit. So, I think marks out of 10, it's going to have to be a 6, maybe a 7. Yeah, just because of the problems we had with it. You know, with it not knowing whether it's charged or not, and it not kicking in when we wanted it to on the Mazda's battery. Those are big downsides. Those really affected its... You know, its performance so and it's a bit disappointing really because otherwise it's a perfectly capable product we'll give it six and a half no i'll give it 6.8 out of 10 screw it why not not much more to say about it i think this is going to be one of those times where you know, i normally finish on a high note positive notes all around i think i've done that in all my product reviews this is the first one where i ha actually have something negative to say about it and i'm not overly pleased with my purchase i mean would i buy it again no, I mean, if you're just looking for a cheap charger, if you're in a tight spot, I'd recommend it to other people. But I'd say if you can buy something else, you know, if you can afford something a bit more expensive, a bit fancier, then go for it. Or if you don't need something like <laughs> this, then go for an even cheaper option. Go for the smaller charger. It clearly works better. All right, we're going to leave it there. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this video on Pydini doing stuff and filming it. Please don't forget to press the big button here in the middle to subscribe if you haven't already done so. If you liked what you just saw, please click the like button below and leave a comment letting me know what you liked about it. And as always, thank you for watching.